There are two reasons, in my opinion, why the new interim training requirements for permit to carry applicants should be changed. Let's get into it. Reason number one, I don't think it's very safe in some instances. Reason number two, it's not very realistic. Hi folks, I'm Steve from Martell Training Group. I'm a retired New Jersey State Trooper. When I was in the state police, I worked in the firearms investigation unit, so I'm familiar with firearms laws in New Jersey. And these recent changes that have taken place in July, the July this month, July 2023, we have new training requirements for permit to carry applicants and people that currently hold a permit to carry. So I'm gonna go through the two main reasons why I think they should be changed. Reason number one, I don't think it's very safe in some cases. If you look at the course of fire, and this is in the use of force document that's found on the New Jersey State Police website, these documents and the, the PowerPoint and the use of force can be found on njsp.org under firearms info, forms to download, permit to carry section. So they've added the one yard line, three feet, to basically it's a one-handed hip retention shot where you draw from the holster and you shoot from your hip and it's, it can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and for someone to walk off the street you know just walk into a training class who has very little firearms experience it puts a lot on the firearms instructor to make sure they can do this safely also most firing ranges in new jersey do not allow you to shoot at the one yard line because it's such a close distance to the target there can be some issues there and if you again if you don't do it properly a lot of people that don't know what they're doing wind up shooting their weak or support hand because they don't do it properly so police officers get a lot of training just drawing from the holster before they even do any live fire exercises so it requires a lot of training folks that typically is not in a basic uh, pistol course for people who want to get their permits to carry also the course is time there's a four second uh period there's also a two second period at that one yard line i think this time constraint adds extra stress to the participant which can also be unsafe now, one thing on the on the holster, another safety issue is the holster. Typically in these courses, the instructor will talk about a good holster, what the characteristics or requirements are for a decent holster that you're gonna that's gonna secure your gun to your body and also be readily accessible if you need your gun. So typically this is discussed in class. Now with this new requirement, you're gonna have people showing up with a holster that they bought off of Amazon and maybe they don't really have any rhyme or reason other other than they like the way it looked. So now you're going to have people showing up with holsters that may or may not be safe to uh, qualify with. Reason number two, not being very realistic. This course of fire to me is taken from the RPO, New Jersey RPO, Retired Police Officer Use of Force document that's been uh, in circulation for years. I haven't read each one word for word, so I don't know if it's the exact same document, but I do know that it was the same file name. They changed it. And I do think that this is the result of the Attorney General's office saying, well, July is when we were supposed to come out with the new training requirements. We didn't, so we're going to come up with the interim training requirements, which means it's, you know, until the final uh, training, comprehensive training program is developed, here's what you should do in the interim. And they've taken this use of force that they've used for the RPO, which again, this is taken for police, this is from pol for police officers. This is the same course minus the night fire with the flashlight. It's the same course that police officers in New Jersey qualify with twice a year. So I just think that it's a little excessive for the average citizen. It's a little too much without additional training. The 25 yard line, I think 20% of the rounds in this course are at the 25 yard line. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because on one hand, as a private citizen who's carrying for personal protection, one of the elements that you have to prove 
when you if you ever are in a situation where you use your gun you're going to have to prove that you had the right to act the way you did and prove that you acted under self-defense and there are certain elements that have to be met and i've done a video on this which i'll put a link to in the description if you want to see that video but one of the elements is that it has to be an immediate or imminent threat to you or a third party that's near you. So that means that it can't be someone shouting from a window saying, hey, I'm going to get you next week. This is an imminent threat that's in front of you that's happening or about to happen. This is not typically something that's going to be 25 yards or farther away. And to me, to require someone, it's the course of fire requires shots behind a barricade, next to a barricade, 25 yards typically you are not going to be that far and shooting your gun for self-defense now can a situation exist where you're 25 yards or more and you can't retreat because that's another element that they're going to look at if you use your gun were you able to extricate yourself from this situation could you have left uh, safely 100 percent. if you can leave the situation if you can extricate yourself from that situation and be pretty sh almost 100 percent positive that you can safely leave the the uh the threat you are expected to do that so is there a case could there be a situation where you're 25 yards or farther and you can't leave yeah there could be but in my opinion and experience that the chances of that happening to a private citizen are extremely low. So most encounters are going to be very close quarters, very close. So to me, they require the 25 yard line barricade next to the barricade. I think it's a little bit much for most citizens. I don't think there's anything wrong with training and, you know, practicing at 25 yards, but your mindset should be, this is a self-defense situation. I'm using my gun as a last resort. What's happening immediately in front of me or the people or the person next to me, this is not something that's going to be from a distance. Now, police officer, different story. Police officers are expected to stop the threat. So a police officer may may have to shoot 25 yards or farther away because they're expected to stop and apprehend that suspect. So private everyday citizen, usually it's a, a close quarter situation. So realistically, to me, you shouldn't have to, that shouldn't be part of it. In summary, folks, I just want to say that if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm a strong advocate for additional training. I think people should have weapon retention training. I think they should have close quarter uh, training and all kinds of uh, training courses, timed, not timed, but it should be by choice. It should not be mandated and private citizens should not have to qualify with the same course that police officers have to qualify with. Just a personal opinion or they shouldn't have to do it without additional training. The weapon retention and the additional training should be tailored to each individual and their experience level and what they desire from the training. I, I think it's a bad idea to have someone just show up with very little experience uh, to a course for the weekend and say, okay, now you're going to qualify at the one yard line, hip retention. And I just think that's going to put a lot on the firearms instructor. They're going to wind up charging more, having additional days or hours for the class because it's going to be additional instruction that's required. But the good news to me, folks, is that this it's called the interim uh, training. It's just until they release a comprehensive uh, course. And hopefully they will keep this stuff in mind when they develop a course of fire for the private citizen for concealed carry. Because I don't think they need to be as extensive as the police officer course of fire. And finally, the plaintiffs for the Kuhn Siegel matter, which I've discussed extensively in other videos, have filed an emergency motion for a TRO and preliminary injunction to basically amend that original complaint to include these interim training requirements as unconstitutional in a new preliminary injunction. So good news is that Judge Baum has reopened the case, put it on the active calendar, meaning hopefully she will rule and make a decision on the motion that was filed to amend the complaint and issue TROs or preliminary injunction on these new training requirements. So I know some folks are probably holding off on what to do. Should I contact a firearms instructor? Should I wait? Uh, so good news that hopefully Judge Baum will issue a decision soon. 
If you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with anyone you think will be interested or will benefit. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you know when we release new videos. And if you haven't subscribed to our podcast, I'll put that link in the description as well. Please subscribe to that because sometimes we, we can update the podcast quicker than we can update the YouTube channel with the videos. We'll try to keep everybody up to date with these changes. Until then, folks. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.